Okay, let's talk about trigonometric identities. And I love to uh, do these type of problems. And most of you out there that are doing trigonometric identity problems are doing so as part of like a pre-calculus course. That's the typical course that has trigonometry in it. So of course, trigonometric identities has something to do with trigonometry, and actually uh, it does, okay? And if you're going to be taking a course like pre-calculus, uh, something like uh, in a course to get you ready to take calculus, you're gonna have to be able to handle uh, trigonometric identities and a ton of other stuff as well. But uh, what is an identity? Well, an identity, all right, let's just answer this question real quick, is basically a formula, all right? It's just a formula. And what we're saying is that this is equal to that. We're making an equivalency. So a fancy word for that is an identity. And of course, we're, we um, are dealing with trigonometric functions. So this is gonna be called a trigonometric identity. But the problem that we're gonna be doing here is we're going to verify this. So it's saying, okay, this is equal to that. Okay, fine, why don't you verify, prove it to me that this right here is in fact equal to that. Go ahead and verify it. And this is the typical type of problems that a lot of you out there probably don't like doing. So when you heard me saying, I love to do trigonometric identity problems, a lot of you might have been like, you know, a matter like, okay, Mr. YouTube, math man, enough with your excitement about mathematics. Just teach me how to do trigonometric identities in a super easy way. Well, I'm definitely gonna give you some guidance here, okay? But the only way you're going to get good at doing trigonometric identities is to practice and you, uh, you want to keep some certain guidelines in mind when you do this practice, okay? So I'm definitely going to help you out, and we're actually going to do this trigonometric identity or verify this here in a second. Now, if you want to try this on your own, okay, definitely, uh, you know, feel free to pause the video. You could um, do uh, your work. You can have different steps and still get the right answer. So there's not just one way to do these particular problems, but, uh, of course, uh, you know, whatever you do, uh, your teacher will, you know, be grading it whether it is right or wrong. So we'll talk about all this. And if this video helps you out, please consider liking and subscribing as that helps me out. Okay, so let's get into trigonometric identities. And we're just going to stick with this problem here. But uh, the first thing we want to talk about is just some general guidelines to do a trigonometric identity problem. And if you have a good teacher, a good pre-calculus teacher or trigonometry teacher, I'm pretty certain that they uh, kind of gave you these guidelines and some other ones as well. So I'm kind of abbreviating and I'm kind of just putting down some big picture points that you want to be thinking about when you do a trigonometric identity problem. So the first is you need to know all these fundamental trigonometric identities. So when you start studying trigonometric identities, you're going to be uh, given a ton of identities. And all those identities there are called the fundamental trigonometric identities. Then you get into like specialized ones like double angle, half angle. Those aren't the fundamental trigonometric identities. You're going to need to know all the basic identities, and there are a lot. So you make sure that you have good and accurate notes. Okay, don't try to uh, memorize all these by, you know, uh, rote memorization. Now, some of these you're going to have to remember, like on tests and quizzes. Others, just write them down, okay, reference your notes until you can remember them, okay? So, and there's going to be quite a few of them. So make sure you have a list of all these fundamental identities. The second thing is you need to be strong in algebra, okay? Well, if you're taking pre-calculus, hopefully you didn't pass like algebra 2, with like a C plus, okay? Because all those previous courses, your algebra skills, your all those weak things are gonna start, you know, coming into play. Uh, so yes, you do use algebra, you know, in pre-calculus and working with trigonometric identities. So if you're struggling with a lot of the ways things are being manipulated, you may need to go back and do some re uh, review and brush up your algebra skills. Okay, the next thing is you wanna work on one side. Now, what am I talking about there? Let's go up here, and here we have two sides of an identity. We have the left side and the right-hand side. But you really want, uh, want to think of this as the more complicated side and like the more uh, basic side, all right, or the easy side. So this is the more complicated side. This is the easy side. So ch pick a side, and almost always you're going to pick the more complicated side, and you're going to want to work with this expression to make it turn into this expression. In other words, we're gonna, we're gonna manipulate this side of the identity. We're gonna do all sorts of things, these fundamental identities, algebra techniques to uh, get it to um, 
look like sine uh, theta. Okay, so that's kind of the objective of verifying. So that's what that means right there. And then another good tip is to use sine and cosine. So turn everything into sine and cosine. That's also a very good tip. Now, this is these are general uh, uh, kind of concepts. I would say working on one side, the complicated side, this is almost always you, you want to do that. And you definitely need to know those fundamental identities and you definitely need to be strong in algebra. And more often than not, when you turn everything into sine and cosine, uh, that works out well. And then there's a whole bunch of other little uh, small techniques. But again, the only way you're going to get good at this is by practice, practice, practice. So let's get into this problem. And I'm just going to show you my work. Okay, If you're at this level of mathematics uh, and uh, you, know, you have your fundamental identities, um, they're available to you. You can kind of follow along, but I will, um, uh, you know, talk this, talk each step of the problem here, uh, my solution out. Okay, so first things first, let me go ahead and just concentrate on the numerator. So again, remember I told you it's nice to work in sine and cosine. So I have a sine here, but I have a tangent theta here. So let's change tangent uh, to sine over cosine. So if you didn't know, tangent is equal to sine over cosine. That is a real, real basic uh, fundamental identity, and hopefully you know that. So let's go ahead and rewrite the numerator this way. And notice I have brackets here. I'm going to put that sine theta over 1 plus, and I'm putting it over 1 because I'm going to rewrite that tan tangent, tangent theta, as sine theta over cosine theta. So tangent is equal to sine over cosine. And uh, this little symbol there is the theta symbol. It could be x, it could be y, it doesn't make a difference. But because I have a fraction here, I'm just putting that over 1, and we'll get back to that in a second. All right, let's talk about the numerator. So here I have 1 plus secant theta. Well, uh, again, a great technique is to put everything into sine and cosine. So secant is uh, equal to 1 over the cosine, okay? So I have 1 plus 1 over 1 over cosine theta, and notice I have my brackets here. And what's the objective? Well, my objective is to simplify all of this so eventually I have it down uh, equal to a sine, okay? Just 1 sine theta. All right, so let's continue on. All right, so here uh, we have uh, a numerator and uh, a denominator. This is actually a complex fraction, so we're going to have to clean this up both the numerator and denominator, and this is where your algebra skills come in handy. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. So here is where we left off. So this is what this is equivalent to. Okay, I'm going to explain this right now. Now, hopefully you know how to add and subtract fractions, but one of the easiest way to uh, add and subtract fractions uh, when you have variable situations going on is to use what I like to call the bow tie method. Uh, it's just it's like one of my favorite hacks in mathematics. If you want to review this, um, I have a video. Uh, I have multiple videos on fractions on my YouTube channel, but one of my most popular videos has well over a million views is uh, Best Fraction Hack Ever, I think is the name of it. But it explains this method of adding and subtracting fractions. Now, you hopefully know how to add these fractions. I'm sure you do. But let's just review how I'm going to do it. So you, the way it is or the way you do it is start from the bottom right Okay, so here, this bottom right, uh, this denominator, you go this this times this. So it's cosine theta times sine theta is what? Sine theta, cosine theta. Okay, order doesn't make a difference. It could be cosine uh, times sine or sine times cosine. So it's this pattern specifically, this times this. Now, I'm going to go 1 plus sine theta. All right, so I'm going this. I'm starting from this uh, arrow or this direction first. That's step one. Step two is this way, and step three is going to be this. So that's going to be one plus um, sine theta. So one times sine theta is sine theta. And because this is an addition problem, I'm going to put addition there, and this forms my numerator. Okay. And then now we have one times cosine theta is cosine theta. Okay, so make sure you understand this technique. It's going to be, uh, it will really, really just make things go smoother for you. Um, and uh, more advanced mathematics. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do the denominator. So here I have a 1 plus 1 over cosine theta. Let's just put that over 1. Anytime you don't see a fraction, you can always put it over 1. So let's go ahead and do that same technique. So cosine theta times 1 is what? Cosine theta. 1 plus 1, okay, or 1 times 1, excuse me, is 1. And now this is an addition problem. So this forms my 
uh, numerator, and then one times cosine theta is cosine theta. Okay, so I can just do this super easy, you know, boom, 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 boom. So I don't have to do a lot of thought, and I could just, you know, go from here to here. And this is the way you want to work. And But if, you know, if you had to change this to like, okay, the LCD is cosine theta, so I'm going to put cosine theta, multiply both numerator and denominator here, add this up, add those up. You could do that as well, but it's going to require more steps in your writing. So you need to know these little techniques that I'm going over with. Okay, so now let's take a look at what we're dealing with at this point. Well, what we have is a complex fraction, a fraction uh, divided by another fraction. So we have this whole fraction being divided by this whole fraction down here. That's why having these grouping symbols, these brackets and stuff are so important. So what we're going to do is rewrite this. Anytime you have a complex fraction, you want to say, okay, this thing is being uh, divided by, okay, this thing down here, okay, which is our denominator. So let's go ahead and rewrite it that way. So this would be our numerator. So our numerator is being divided by our denominator. So use that division symbol like that. So we're going to rewrite that complex fraction this way. And so now we just go ahead and use our knowledge of fractions. Fractions keep coming up over and over again. That's why it's so critical you know how to um, you know, deal with fractions you know, perfectly easily. So what, uh, how do we divide fractions? Well, we turn it into a multiplication problem and we flip this fraction, find the reciprocal of it, right? Uh, the, uh, of the fraction to the right of the division symbol. Okay, so we're gonna turn this into multiplication and flip this thing upside down so we're going to have cosine theta, so this was our denominator, now it becomes our numerator, over cosine theta plus 1, okay? All right, so now let's go ahead and actually work on simplifying this. So let's go down here, and how do we uh, multiply fractions? Well, again, remember, we need to multiply the respective uh, numerators and denominators, and when I do that, you're looking at you're saying, okay, uh, I'm going to end up with one big one big fraction bar here. I'm gonna kind of continue this on because we're just gonna multiply and I'm gonna have uh, factors going on here, okay? But notice right off the bat, I have a cosine theta in uh, the denominator and a cosine theta in the numerator. So I can cross cancel these right there. So those go away. So that leaves me with this over this, okay? So let's go ahead and talk about that. So that's uh, sine theta, cosine theta plus sine theta, all over cosine theta plus one. All right, so now what do we do? Well, we look for opportunities to factor. Factoring uh, and cross-canceling, that's a huge part of doing these trigonometric identity problems. So notice I have a, a sine theta, that's a, a common factor. So my greatest common factor here is sine theta. I can factor out a sine theta. And what does this leave me in the numerator? Cosine theta plus one. And look what I have down in the denominator, cosine theta plus one. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit of a trick or a hint. Anything you have, like an expression down here, uh, and you're like getting close to the end of the problem, start looking for ways to find that same expression up in like in the numerator, okay? So you can cross cancel. And oftentimes you're gonna have to factor out uh, something uh, some sort of greatest common factor to get that same expression because look how awesome this is. We could just cross cancel these and I'm just left with sine theta. And that's exactly what you do. You cross cancel cosine theta plus one. These are factors again, right? Cosine theta plus one. And that leaves me with sine theta. And there you go. That whole thing we had initially in the left-hand side uh, is equivalent to sine theta. We just verified it, okay? All right, so how did you do? I mean, if you were able to do this problem, I must give you a nice little happy face, an A plus. I'm gonna give you 110% and a few stars to make you feel extra special. But I would say, in terms of trigonometric identities, this uh, problem is like a medium level, okay? So it's kind of like, uh, you know, hot sauce, right? You have the mild hot sauce, then you have the super crazy hot, hot sauce, and then you have like that average hot sauce. I would say uh, this problem would be kind of like in the middle because there is definitely much more challenging trigonometric identity problems and a lot easier ones as well. But this was a good, you know, I think uh, one for me to talk about uh, some of the techniques and practices that you need to be focusing on to do these problems right. But let's go ahead and just review, all right? Back up here, 
our guidelines is this, okay? Don't try to be a hero and remember all these fundamental identities by memory. Have your notes. That's why you take notes and make sure your notes are correct, by the way, too, and double check that you wrote down these identities cor uh, correctly. And then your algebra skills, like what I was showing you how to add fractions and whatnot, make sure you strengthen those skills, okay? Uh, just Again, just because you are in pre-calculus, for example, and you took algebra two, but if you didn't really do as well as you could have done, well, then you're probably, you know, uh, need to review. And a course like pre-calculus is rigorous, okay? So any weak areas is gonna come out, just go back and address those, improve in that, and it'll make everything go better. Uh, work on that complicated side, get it to look like the easier side. And typically working with sine, uh, turning everything into sine and cosine is a great technique. There are other techniques. And if you wanna see more trigonometric identities solved, well, I'm gonna leave a link to my pre-calculus course in the description of this video, along with my math help program. But you gotta get good at these, okay? And it's a big part of uh, what you learn in trigonometry that is uh, typically within a pre-calculus course. Well, it's not typically, if you're taking pre-calculus, you're definitely uh, taking trigonometry. But uh, hopefully this video helps you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.